the issue is people think, okay, if I tell you that these are my standards that you need to fit into the box that I'm telling you to fit into. No, we don't. I could just leave. <laughs> Yo, party people, it's Ashley of singlewomanchronicles.com, where I encourage women to be the best version of themselves through healing and avoiding certain pitfalls in dating, love, and relationships. And today's episode is brought to you by my fiction novel, Single Woman Chronicles, an Atlanta love story, kind of. It's about a young lady named Ariana who has these rules in dating or whatever, and she's really trying to protect her heart because she just got it broken by her ex. But then y'all know how late Atlanta dating is. It's always kind of ghetto. So she's like navigating that and she meets this guy who she thinks is great. But of course her ex tries to come back into the picture. So now she's trying to figure out like, do I go with the devil that I know or do I stick with this new guy who's seemingly perfect, but is it too good to be true? I don't know, y'all. But throughout it all, you know, she has this whole baby mama drama situation at Benihana. And she also has all of these different situations with her ex and her next. Y'all, it's a lot of drama now, okay? If you want a free copy of this, the ebook is on books on Google Play right now for free book number one. There is book one and two. Get into the drama. If you're looking for something to read, just, you know, for entertainment, this is your reading right here. This is your sign to hop on and get Single Woman Chronicles and Atlanta Love Story, kinda. If you want the physical copy, of course, it is on Amazon as well as Apple Books and Barnes and Noble. And yeah, just get into it, get into it. Okay, today's topic is about detaching your worth. You must detach your value, people, okay? Before I get started, my dog's already on his BS. <laughs> I feel like he should be the mascot for my podcast right now because every time I start recording, he's on his BS. It's either him or it's people in the parking lot that are making all the noise in the world. I'm like, come on, people. I'm I'm on set here, okay? Anyway... So before I get into detaching your work, y'all, I don't understand, okay? I just want to say this. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand. First, it was Kiki Palmer's baby daddy. Now it's Jonah Hill. Yes, comedian, white guy that we love, Jonah Hill, is out here trying to police this his ex-girlfriend because she was like, nah, y'all can keep him over what she's wearing on social media and like he tells her like all of these boundaries right and I'm just like is it are they insecure are they just controlling or am I the am I the problem because I find it be like to be a problem to tell somebody what they can and cannot wear um in a way that comes off as controlling and not compromise. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all let me know. I'm single. So, you know, the bitter boy TikTok will be in my comments all day on some, oh, that's why you single and you're going to die alone. And if I got to deal with men like that, maybe I am. Because I'm, I'm confusion. And I know it's confused, but I like to say confusion when I'm double confused. Okay? I'm confusion. Because my thing is, if you met me, Wearing a certain thing, being a certain way, having a certain personality. But then when you get in relationship with me and I'm still being that way, I'm literally what you see is what you get. But, and you got me, but now you want to change the what you saw. See, y'all be out here saying, folks, and this is men and women, y'all be out here saying, Oh, I want the truth. I want somebody who don't change. I want somebody who don't switch up and blah, 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 blah. And when you get that person, you switch up. I'm confusion. <laughs> like, so if you don't know, if you see me reaching down in this video, it's because my dog is going to town on his, his paw just licking it. And it's getting on my nerves, y'all. I'm sorry. But anyway, if you don't know, I just saw this on TikTok. So Jonah was dating this surfer. Now, I don't know if y'all know, um, Common Sense will let you know. If somebody surfs, what do they surf in? A swimsuit. So if you surf in a swimsuit and your career is surfing, and of course, social media is a big part of that, 
and you surfing in a swimsuit, won't you think that that person is going to be in a swimsuit on the internet? I mean, that's kind of common sense. So there's this thread of her showing how Jonah Hill was telling her that she needs to take down her swimsuit videos. Now, she's a surfer. I would believe that every video is a swimsuit video because she's surfing in a swimsuit. What's crazy is he slid into her DMs because she was surfing in a swimsuit. The math ain't mathing. <laughs> like two plus two equals 16 at this point. Because, sir, what? I'm, what? I, but you found me surfing. So you want me to give up my career to make you comfortable. I'm confused. I am confusion. So, like, after seeing this, because me, okay, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Like, back in the day, I was that homegirl that's like, leave him. He dumb. He stupid. Blah, blah, blah. This, whatever. I'm not that person no more. The reason I'm not is, one, I've grown. I'm more mature. And I realize you just can't throw away things that you don't like. Sometimes you have to, like, work through things. Two, it's ghetto out here in the single world. So if you can work it out, baby, please work it out. My mom called me this morning because my mom loves the housewives and stuff, the franchise. And we were watching it um, together. And she was like, oh, Kim Zosiak, I think her and her husband are getting divorced. And then she called me today and was like, I think they reconciling, child. And I'm like, she better because ain't nothing out here but rotten turds and sewer water. And I remember Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet thinking they was going to get a divorce at one point. They lasted a week and then they got back together. I'm like, bruh, it, it's funky out here. If you don't have to be single and you can work it out, baby, work it out. Please. <laughs> like, please. Now, I'm not saying, I'm saying this if it's minor stuff. Because the thing is, relationships, period, are hard. Friendships romantic really they they be hard so me i'm the friend if you're in a relationship i have a lot of friends that are married and in relationships they often come to me with their grievances and what's crazy is i'm single and i'll be like y'all know i'm single right but what's crazy is i'm usually the sounding board for working it out usually i'm the one that's like i don't think that's that big of a deal y'all can really go to therapy you know y'all can really just kind of suffer through that because if y'all was single, y'all would have to deal with something. So sometimes you you just fight through that. So I'm usually that homegirl. So when I saw the situation with Kiki Palmer and her baby daddy, I'm like, it's embarrassing, but it's fixable. Like if y'all can come, especially because y'all have a kid together, if y'all can come together on a common ground and lay out each side's expectations, because I can tell by Kiki Palmer's presence online, I don't know this woman personally, but just from what I see online, I can tell that she values her authenticity. So when you value your authenticity, it feels like an attack when someone is telling you that you need to dress a certain way, be a certain way, get in a box. When your whole entire life career has gotten you where you are for being outside of the box. You are loud. You are light. So you're basically trying to dim my light. So I feel like it's deeper because men out here, you know, these bitter men out here thinking that it's it's about her showing her cheeks and, and wanting to be a hot girl. It really has nothing to do with that. It has way more, in my opinion, to do with her value of her authenticity. When you are a person who is authentic, who is unique in your authenticity, and you're not afraid to walk in that because a lot of people are afraid to walk in their authenticity. And you've been successful in that. And now someone's trying to tell you not to be authentic, to tell you to be outside of yourself. I feel like sometimes that can feel like an attack. So I think that's more so why um, Kiki may be bothered. I don't know. I don't, I don't mind their business. Well, I'm minding it this week. But I'm not in a business on a personal level. I don't know these people. but. That's more so what I saw it as deeper than just the outfit. It was more so you trying to tell me not to be me. This is who I am. So, yeah, but I, I think theirs is fixable. I don't think he disrespected her. I think he more so, like, embarrassed her. Um, He didn't say nothing crazy. 
I do think his opinion is valid. I think there's a way to come in the middle and meet and ask, okay, what is the root of you saying this out loud? What was the root of you wanting me to take this dress off? Was it Usher? Because if you trust me, it doesn't matter what I wear, honestly, because you know I'm not going to do anything. But if it would make you more comfortable, I can choose to possibly wear less revealing outfits. But what does that even mean? And what does that mean for you? (laughs) I just feel like it's a conversation, right? Hopefully they work it out. Now, when this Jonah Hill thing came up, I'm like, there is a trend. And let me tell you something. What this Jonah Hill thing told me is insecurity does not have a price tag. Insecurity ain't got nothing to do with how much money is in a man's pocket or a woman's pocket. Like you can be the richest person on earth plus the most insecure person on earth because security comes from within. Security comes from experience. And I'm leading into the topic I'm talking about today because we have to value ourselves within before we get anything on the outside of who we are. Because it don't matter how rich you are, how successful you are, you can still be insecure. You can still feel empty with all your riches and all your fame. Because the text messages that I saw with the Jonah, Jonah's was worse to me than Kiki Baby Daddy. Because one, he did approach her privately. But literally, people don't understand that just because you have a standard, that does not mean that I have to abide abide by that standard. I can actually choose to walk away. Like if me, Ashley, you say, hey, Ash, that's my dog, y'all. I'm sorry. But me, Ashley, if you give me a standard, right? You tell me, hey, I would love to date you. But in order to date me as a person, you can't have male friends. You can't wear shorts that are not uh, three inches above the knee and you can't go outside um, and have drinks with your girls. You can only do that with me. I have the option to say, oh, I hear your standards, but I'm choosing not to abide by them and I'm choosing to exit stage left, right? The issue is people think, okay, if I tell you that these are my standards that you need to fit into the box that I'm telling you to fit into. No, we don't. I could just leave. (laughs) I can find somebody who don't put me in a box. I could like really just choose not to be in the box. Actually, I can choose that. And people will get mad at you for not choosing their box. But I don't want to be in your box. (laughs) Your box too small. Like, okay. And again, y'all can call it what y'all want. Oh, she going to die alone. She going to be single. Okay. (laughs) Like, okay. I, I don't. Okay, like, and I, but no, seriously, like with the Jonah situation, he literally was attacking her career. He's, he, he's, he gave her like, you can't have unstable friends. You can't model on social media, sir. My career is a surfer. And in surfing, I get a lot of swimsuit deals. I'm paying my bills through modeling. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So I wish I had advice for y'all because like, again, I'm not that home girl or that friend or that person who's automatically going to tell you just because you come up with a hiccup or a disagreement in a relationship that you should drop it. Cause no, it's too much of that going on. Sometimes you just got to weather that storm. Sometimes you just got to agree to disagree until you agree to come to some sort of agreement. Like <laughs> it's just going to be like that sometimes. Right. And I do think a lot of times communication will solve a lot of this, right? But if you know that you know you are not a person that someone else is trying to make you out to be in a relationship, like they met you one way, but when they got into a relationship with you, you thought they wanted you, but really they just wanted the image of you to fit into the box that they've created. You can't soar and be happy and be free and be the best version of yourself like that. Like you can't, I've, I've experienced that. I've, I've experienced situations where a person literally saw who I was. 
I showed up as who I am. I showed up as authentic. And then they get into a relationship with me. They start dating me. And then they're like, oh yeah, I know I told you I like that thing about you, but I really don't. Can you change it? No. <laughs> like you lied. You lied. I didn't lie. You did. You did. You lied, sir. It's one thing to compromise about behaviors and characters and things that test the relationship, right? Like, okay, you going out too many times. Can you limit that? Cause I want you to spend time with me. Okay. I get that. Let's come to a compromise or, you know, um, I don't like that people reach out to you at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. I feel disrespected. Can you limit that? Okay, we can talk about that. But you telling me, hey, I don't like that you're on social media talking to your fans because you shouldn't be doing it. What? <laughs> what? I don't like that you're so friendly. And when people speak to you of the opposite sex, you say, hey, back. What? I don't. How does that affect the relationship? I don't know, y'all. I, I, maybe I've been single too long. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm tired. It's a lot going on. I'm tired. But um, whatever you choose to do, don't allow the internet and the outside to de determine your value in yourself. Um, Me and my homegirl were having a conversation, and she was saying that she hasn't been getting approached lately. And I'm like, mm, okay, but I don't think that has anything. And she was saying it was taking a hit to her self-esteem. And I was telling her, like, I don't think that has anything to do with how you look. I also don't think it should take hit your self-esteem because your self-worth and your value is determined outside of other people. If you attach your worth to how much attention you get in this world, Oh, baby, you're going to be on a roller coaster. You're going to be on a roller coaster. Back in the day in high school, me and my homeboy used to call it hot season. There are seasons in life where you go through where it's your hot season, quote unquote, where everybody and their mama trying to talk to you. And then it's seasons where you go through where you're not getting approached as much. And that's okay. <laughs> like, I feel like it. that's with anything. It ebbs and flows in life. You know what I mean? But I feel like we have to detach our value from the outside world. Like for sure. I am about to drop an ebook very soon on this whole thing because I realized that, you know, with self-worth, I've talked about it so many times, but before, you know, the angle I came from was mostly just from a mental health perspective, but I'm finally realizing like the importance of self-worth, especially with all the stuff going on with like Kiki Palmer and this whole Jonah Hill and his ex-girlfriend situation, like we have to understand that we have to have an unconditional level of self-worth in order to operate in abundance and happiness and be stable. Because if our self-worth is based on the condition of how much attention we get, on how many likes that we get, on how our career is going, on how much our relation, how good our relationship is, on if we're single and thriving versus if we're single and miser miserable, on if we're in a relationship and thriving and in a relationship and miserable, like it can't be based on those things. Your worth legit needs to be based on you internally, just knowing that when you wake up in the morning, you are enough. You are capable. You are valuable. You are wonderful. You are worthy every day, all day, no matter what is going on in your circumstances. We have to detach our worth. Too many women. I hear from too many women when somebody breaks up with them, when a relationship situation doesn't work out, they're trying to find the why because they're trying to figure out, is the why me? Because I feel like the reason it didn't work out is my fault. And if it's my fault, that means I'm less worthy than I thought I was. And that is horrible. It is horrible. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that it doesn't suck. Yes, when I go through situations when things don't work out, 
the first person I blame is myself. It's sad, but it's the truth. Um, but I've learned to detach my value from that though. Like, I don't feel like I'm less worthy just because somebody did not choose me. I, I mean, not everybody got good taste. Like <laughs> that, that's not, I'm not going to allow somebody on the outside to tell me how valuable that I am. Because when you allow that to happen, you're going to feel less valuable with each, each reje rejection. And sometimes rejection is a good thing because sometimes we think we want things that we actually don't. Because I don't know about y'all, I've had scenarios where I prayed and was like, oh, God, let me get this dude. And I got that dude and I was like, oh, I don't want that dude. And it just wasn't. It just wasn't what it was. But it has been situations where I was rejected and I didn't want to be. And I wish that I wasn't. But at the same time, like, I just got to bounce back. We're not, we not going to always win the battles. We not. And that's okay. Just allow it to make you bounce back and come back better. You still got to know, okay, I'm still valuable. You're going to get some no's. You're probably going to get several. And that's okay. It should not determine your value. So I just want today you to detach your value from your situations, from your relationships. What should your value be grounded in? It should be grounded in me, of course. I'm a Christian. It's grounded, it's, it's grounded in God. It's grounded in Jesus. Y'all know, y'all can call it cliche, but it's scripture. Beautifully, wonderfully made. Point blank in the period. Because I am. Okay? Because I'm yes. Okay. But I think also you just have to understand that you are a beautiful, a beautiful human being just because you are. Like you bring something to the world every day that you wake up, you bring something to the world because if you didn't, you wouldn't be waking up. You bring joy. You bring smiles on people's face. You bring support. You know, when you are somebody's daughter, you are somebody's son. So that in itself is joy to your parents. You are somebody's sister and brother. That in itself is joy to your siblings. You are somebody's friend. You are somebody's best friend. That in itself is joy to your friends. You bring something to this world just by waking up. Never forget that. Never forget that. Do not feel like you have to be a certain way, look a certain way, live a certain way in order to be valuable because you don't. Um, many of us feel less valuable because of our past experiences, because of the stories that have been written before we were even adult enough to start writing our own stories in our childhoods, our, our abandonments, our losses, our being bullied, um, the words that were spoken and the words that were never spoken, you know, growing up, never been told I was beautiful by my mom just because she never got that hit me. Um, I only got told that on the outside. So I look for that from outside sources because I didn't see it in. Even growing up as an adult, like my mom not saying, oh, I'm proud of you. It affected me. Eventually she said it, but it's just like those kinds of things that affects our value. So um, much of our value is more so dependent upon, much of how we see our own value is more so dependent of, upon how we think the outer world views us. And how that comes across in our brain. I know that sounds confusing, but what I mean is, for example, if we think our family feels like we suck and we're a failure, we're going to internalize that and think that we suck and we're a failure. And then lo and behold, when we finally get to the down to the nitty gritty, we talk to our family about it. They'd be like, we never thought that. We actually were proud of you the whole time. And you're like, but you never said it. And they're like, oh, I didn't think you, we needed to say it. We thought you knew. Like, no, no, that's no. It's called something appraisal in um scientific studies. But yeah, it's like how we feel like other people appraise us is how we view ourselves. And most of the times that's not true. That's why you can't attach your word to outside sources. It gotta be on the inside. Like it has to be on the inside. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, without God, I would feel dirty, disgusting, ugly, um, flu footed. Uh, just all the above, <laughs> but because I'm grounded in Christ, because I'm grounded in who I am, because I understand that 
I sometimes sit back and take inventory on my awesomeness. You have to do that sometimes. Like, when's the last time you sat back and took inventory on your awesomeness? Because you amazing. You is kind. You is beautiful. You is smart. Like, you have to know that. You have to know your value. You knowing your value is going to be how you show up in the world. So you have to detach your value from everything on the outside. Easier said than done. I know. But when you get grounded in it, in yourself, with yourself, in God, in Christ, when the outside circumstances start to hit you and try to devalue who you are, you'll quickly bounce back. You'll quick because because even with situations where I have been rejected, of course, the first day, week or so, I'm like, dang, that ain't work out. Dang, wasn't me. Dang, what could I have done better? But eventually I wake up and realize who I am and be like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, still wonderful. Still a good catch. Not everybody got good taste. Moving along. So I just want to encourage you to detach your value because y'all see how ghetto it is outside. Y'all see? It? Like, it's folks. Out <sighs> this young lady was minding her business on her surfboard. And this man told her she need to get off her surfboard and she need to be out there swimming in a sweatsuit. But he found her in a swimsuit. Y'all better get some self-worth out here. Detach your value. These folks is crazy. These folks are crazy. <laughs> like, if I got peace, peace within myself, that's all I need, okay? And even though, again, I go back and forth because I'm like, y'all, I'm the single friend most of the time. Yes, I want to be in a relationship real bad. But at the same time, I just don't, I want to be in a happy relationship. Let me preface that. I want to be in a healthy relationship. I value a person allowing me to live in who I am authentically because I know who I am authentically does not seek to harm anybody. Like I'm always showing up with good intentions, right? Like for sure. So if me being authentically me and my good character that I know is good because it's on, from the basis of Christ and I really work hard to be the best version of myself that I can be, right? If being that isn't enough and you come into my life and you try to change who I am based off of your insecurities and your discomforts, just from the stuff that you've pulled from your butthole, <laughs> like it don't make sense to me. And I'm like, I'm not forcing nobody to listen to me because if you're in a healthy, happy relationship, then great. But like, if you're not, maybe you should listen to me. <laughs> Cause I just want you to be happy and whole and healthy. I would love for you to be happy, whole and healthy in a relationship. I mean, I'm not currently, but I, I plan to be in the future. But right now I can say that I'm happy, whole and healthy alone. And um, Miss Mama's on the surfboard is too, because she told she she told um, Jonah Hill, you can keep that nigga. F my ex, you can keep that nigga. Um, so she gets it. She gets it. <laughs> um, the reason I always have like this, this back and forth with this, because I just never want anyone to think that I'm trying to set you up to be single. That's not what I want. Like, especially if that's not what you want. Because I, I say it all the time. I want a relationship. I want to be married. I just haven't met my person yet. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm just like, I see too many scenarios of people just forcing themselves in a box who are like super unhappy, super anxious, super in chaos. There's no peace there. And they're just trying to fit into these boxes for these people when these people really just need therapy because it's like, there's no, there's no good argument for what they're asking for. Because, Jonah, why would you ask this woman who her career is surfing to not model, not be in swimsuits when she be surfing? That don't even make sense. That's like us telling Jonah not to, to take no more auditions for acting, but he an actor. What? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, people. I just want us to be happy and to make sense and for the math to math. When the math maths, I love it. But when we plan mental gymnastics, I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Well, all right, y'all. Till next time. Bye.